Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this series, we'll cover the introductory parts of core data. What it is, what it can do for you, and the basics of modeling your data and performing simple operations such as adding, editing, and deleting records. Core data is an object graph management and persistence framework. Although it's often backed by a relational database, the way to think of it isn't in traditional database terms. Let's start with object graph management. COCO is an object-oriented framework, and you're probably already used to storing data in objects. Imagine you've built up an entire set of these objects. You define classes with certain properties, instantiate them, set those properties, and maybe even have properties to relate objects to each other. Then you have this entire object graph built up and you just want to snapshot it and save it somehow. Then later on when your app restarts, you would want to somehow restore that snapshot and return all those objects to life. That's the persistence part. Core data makes sure your objects are stored away safely and is also smart about retrieving your data. You could have an enormous object graph with millions of objects, but core data will only load and instantiate them as needed. Core data isn't a universal solution though, and there are many alternatives out there. If your needs are simple, you could look into NSKeyed Archiver or NSUser Defaults. These classes let you store strings, numbers, and even arbitrary bits of binary data, and are best for smaller amounts of data. If you were storing app configuration or high scores for a game, this would be a good solution to consider. If you need very high performance or you're already a relational database wizard, you could use SQLite directly or with a wrapper such as FMDB. You'd have to handle creating your database schema and running SQL queries yourself, and you lose some of the things that Core Data would manage for you. But if those are already in your skill set, then it's also a great option that can handle large amounts of data. There are also many third-party options, such as Realm, Parse, and Couchbase Mobile, to name a few. Realm is a cross-platform database built specifically for mobile. Parse has both a local data store and also syncs your data to the cloud. And Couchbase is a NoSQL database that runs locally on device with an optional sync system. You'll find some links below in the notes for more information, and we also have some tutorials on the site to cover some of these systems as well. Core Data has some complexity to it, but it's great for its built-in integration into both Xcode and instruments. It's available on both iOS and OS X, and it scales up to large data sets while being efficient with memory use. If you're interested in learning the basics, at least to see if Core Data is right for you and your project, then keep watching. In this series, we'll cover the basics of core data with the first two videos, we'll explain how to model your data, add records, fetch records, and cover a bit of the behind the scenes working of the core data stack. The next video talks about relationships. You could have an object graph made up of unrelated data, but most of the time your objects will be related to each other somehow. And we'll talk about how to model these relationships and then what those relationships will look like from code. In video four, we'll talk about predicates and sorting. This means you'll be able to tell core data to filter and sort the results that come back when you fetch data. We'll wrap up the instructional videos in video five with a discussion of editing and deleting data. There have been some recent additions to the Core Data APIs to support bulk updates and bulk deletes, which we'll look into as well. Once you have the basics in place, you'll be ready for our intermediate Core Data series, which I'll talk a bit more about in the conclusion video, and you can check out for yourself when you're ready. That's it for this introduction video, and I hope you're ready to dive right into learning about Core Data. Your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to move on to video one and get started. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video tutorial series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.